These are the maximum weight limitations for the 767 freighter. There is one crew entry door on the freighter. The crew entry door can be opened manually from the inside or outside. There is no electric control of this door. Two cargo doors on the left side of the airplane are for main deck cargo and bulk cargo. Electric controls for the main deck cargo door are in the galley near the crew entry door. Entry lights illuminate the area of the main deck cargo door. The lights are controlled either by the entry switch on the lights control panel or by the entry light switch on the pilot's overhead panel. Pushing the cargo area light switch illuminates the lights in the main cargo area above each set of pallet locks. Pushing the main cargo alert switch causes the cargo area lights to flash for several seconds to alert main cargo deck occupants to return to the flight deck. Two cargo doors on the right side of the airplane are larger than the cargo doors on the passenger airplane. Now let's look at temperature control. The compartment temperature controls are used to regulate cabin and flight deck temperatures. A main deck temperature selector controls the temperature range for the forward and aft cabins. In the animal normal position, the compartment temperature controls allow temperatures in the forward and aft cabin between 18 centigrade full cold and 30 centigrade full warm. In the perishable position, the compartment temperature controls allow temperatures in the forward and aft cabin between 2 centigrade full cold and 22 centigrade full warm. Note the new location of the flight deck temperature control selector and the deletion of the recirculation fans. When auto is the selected pack controller mode, flight deck temperature control range is from 18 degrees centigrade full cool to 30 degrees centigrade full warm, regardless of the position of the main deck temperature selector. With the pack selector in the standby mode, pack output temperature is determined by the two positions of the pack selector, normal or warm. This airplane has a forward cargo compartment air conditioning system. You control the system through the forward cargo air conditioning control panel located on the overhead panel. A single selector is used to turn on the system and control temperature in the compartment. In the off position, conditioned air does not flow to the forward cargo compartment. In auto, conditioned air flows to the forward cargo compartment. You can adjust the compartment temperature anywhere from 7 degrees Celsius full cool to 25 degrees Celsius full warm in the auto range. The actual temperature in the forward cargo compartment is displayed here on the ICAS status page. If a temperature cooler than 7 degrees Celsius is required, the forward cargo heat switch must be selected to off. Conditioned air for the forward cargo compartment is provided exclusively by the left pack. The forward cargo temperature control system uses trim air from the cargo compartment heat system to control the temperature of conditioned air supplied to the forward cargo compartment. An auxiliary zone temperature controller adjusts the position of a trim air valve to maintain the temperature commanded by the compartment temperature selector. Ventilation for the forward cargo compartment is provided by the forward cargo exhaust valve. 
During normal operations, the forward cargo exhaust valve opens when the airplane is in flight and the forward cargo air condition selector is in the auto range. The valve closes when the airplane is on the ground, the forward cargo air condition selector is off, one or both packs are not operating, or the equipment cooling system is in override. The ICAS advisory message, forward cargo AC displays, and the in-op light illuminates if the forward cargo air conditioning fails, or for any one of the conditions shown here. The crew extinguishes fires from the cargo fire panel on the aft aisle stand. Three fire bottles are available to extinguish fires in the forward and aft lower cargo compartments. The cargo fire detection system alerts you to a fire in the aft lower cargo compartment. Push the aft cargo fire arm switch to arm the extinguishing system. The aft cargo fire switch accomplishes the following. First, it arms the aft squib on each fire bottle. Second, it closes the associated cargo compartment heat valve. And third, it arms the depressurization discharge switch to discharge the fire bottles. Use the depressurization discharge switch to discharge the fire bottles. Pushing and holding the depressurization discharge switch for one second discharges bottle number one. The ICAS advisory message, Cargo Bottle 1 displays as the bottle discharges. The discharge of the remaining bottles is automatic. The ICAS advisory, Cargo Bottle 2, appears for metered bottle discharge. System operation is similar for a fire in the forward lower cargo compartment. However, additional airplane equipment is affected when you push the forward cargo fire arm switch. These include the forward overboard exhaust fans which turn off and the forward cargo air conditioning system which shuts down. The main deck cargo fire warning light and cargo fire arm switch are located on the cargo fire panel. Dual loop smoke detectors monitor the main deck for smoke. Smoke detector operation is the same as those in the lower cargo compartments. If smoke is detected on the main deck, a fire bell sounds, the master warning lights, the master fire light, and the main deck cargo fire warning light illuminates. The warning message, main cargo fire displays on ICAS. Pushing the main deck cargo fire arm switch reconfigures the airplane to stop airflow to the main deck cargo area and arms the depressurization discharge switch to depressurize the airplane. Pushing the cargo fire depressurization discharge switch initiates a gradual depressurization of the airplane to approximated flight altitude. The reduced oxygen content of the air suppresses the fire. When smoke is no longer detected, the cargo fire warning light extinguishes 
and the ICAST message is removed. Emergency exits for the flight crew are the crew entry door, captain's number two window, and the first officer's number two window. Escape ropes are located in compartments above flight deck windows two left and two right. The ropes are attached to the airplane structure. In an emergency, the first officer's number two window can be opened externally. Ground personnel use an operating handle located under the number two window to unlatch and open the window. Escape reels are stored in a container mounted on the bulkhead opposite the crew entry door. The escape reels are inertial reel descent devices which are used by the crew for emergency egress through the crew entry door. When evacuating through the crew entry door, take the escape reel with you. Hold the hand grip with both hands and exit the airplane. A centrifugal brake in the reel controls the rate of descent. A supernumerary oxygen system is provided for the three supernumerary positions on the flight deck. Oxygen masks are located on the aft flight deck bulkhead above each supernumerary seat. The supernumerary oxygen masks and regulators are the same as those used by the captain and first officer. The freighter airplane is equipped with Halon fire extinguishers only. There are two fire extinguishers on the flight deck, one on the aft luggage wall and one in the lavatory. Two smoke hoods with oxygen are located on the flight deck, one on the aft luggage wall and one in the lavatory. Life vests are stowed at all flight deck seats. Two six-man life rafts are located in the life raft stowage compartment. Two portable oxygen cylinder assemblies are installed, one in the lavatory and one next to the supernumerary seats. Each oxygen cylinder has a disposable continuous flow mask. A crash axe is located on the exterior lavatory wall. A first aid kit is located near the crew entry door. The flight interphone system has been expanded to include cargo operations. The cargo interphone system is used for voice communication between the flight deck and any of six main deck cargo stations. Before you call a cargo handler, you must first connect the cargo interphone to the flight interphone. You do this with the cargo interphone switch. Next, select the cargo handler station you want to contact. With the flight interphone microphone select switch selected, transmitting and receiving is the same as described earlier in this lesson. You can also transmit on the flight interphone system when the transmitter select switch is not selected by selecting the interphone position on the microphone interphone switch on the control wheel. However, the receiver volume control must be manually selected in order to receive. Later, when you are ready to contact the ground crew, you do it in the same way as before. If the ground crew is not monitoring the flight interphone system, the pilot can alert them with a the call signal. To do this, push the ground call switch on the pilot's call panel. 
An alert horn in the nose wheel well sounds when calling the ground crew. Push the ground call switch now. The ground crew can also call the pilots. These are the flight deck indications when the ground crew is calling. The high chime sounds and the ground call light illuminates for 30 seconds unless the light is reset. Selecting the flight microphone select switch resets the ground call light and removes the associated ICAST message. Select an ICAST message to see the conditions for display. Select an ICAST message to see the conditions for display.